but we're not resuming a debate. So you'd like me to restate the motion that as per the usual practice of the House of Commons Standing Committees, that the Standing Committee on Government Operations and Estimate shall not meet during Parliament's summer recess unless the requirements of the 106.4, the standing orders, are met. And now I'm going to speak to this, Mr. Chair. Well, point, of, point of order, Chair. We have a member of the NDP who, who is on a crusade to get parliamentary committees to work as little as possible. Uh, if, if anyone wants to know what, what are the animating causes uh, that, uh, that Mr. Green is excited Sorry, about. Sorry, Mr. Uh, Genwes, let me interrupt Sorry, for a I'll, second, I'll sit back. Everyone has an opinion about Canadian federal politics. Oh, yeah. Hey, gang, what's up? Just Aaron right here at Question Period Canada. We've got a committee meeting, and this one is chaotic. It exemplifies for Canadians what happens in these committees all too often that they say it's a minority government, but it isn't with the coalition. And there's evidence here in this one that the NDP, the Bloc Québécois, and the Liberals are ganging up against the official opposition Conservatives and pretending like... It's okay that they're doing it. Matt Green is an NDP MP that is from Ontario. He's a clown. He's a bum. He's a loser. In one person's opinion, that could be. He comes off very lazy in this video. He wants the Liberals, NDP, and the Bloc not to have to meet, not to investigate these scams and scandals that have been going on so often with the Trudeau NDP coalition in the federal government. Oh, this dirty cabinet. I don't want to get into that too much, but this committee meeting really does exemplify the way it goes in the committee meetings. All the sense is made on one side and then dividing and distracting and delaying from the other side. And there's only two sides in these committee meetings. There's the Conservatives, then there's the coalition between the other three parties, led by the Liberals, but backed up by the other two. It's tough to watch. It's super interesting, though. Um, fortunately, Garnet Genu is uh, the star of this one. He is arguing for Canadians. You'll like Garnet very much after this. He's a cowboy from Alberta, MP, giddy up. Anyhow, this one is a very chaotic video. I didn't mean for the intro to be so long. It's also a long piece, but you will learn so much about Canadian politics watching this one. Woo, let's take a peek. It's uh, pretty dramatic and frustrating to watch, but also we've got to know how bad it is out there so you know how much your vote is going to count in the next federal election. It counts in all the elections, but never more than the one that's upcoming. Let's take a look. Here we go, Matt Green, clown. You're allowed to introduce a motion now. You can't just start okay. making things up that you're reintroducing something. You're welcome to introduce a brand sure. new motion, but we're not resuming a debate. So you'd like me to restate the motion? that as per the usual practice of the House of Commons Standing Committees, that the Standing Committee on Government Operations and Estimate shall not meet during Parliament's summer recess unless the requirements of the 106.4, the standing orders, are met. And now I'm going to speak to this, Mr. Chair. Well, point, of, point of order, Chair. Uh, this motion is not substantially different than another motion that was previously introduced in this committee. Therefore, it's out of order. If you're going to introduce a new motion, it has to be substantially different than an existing motion. Or you can move a motion to resume consideration of another motion. Uh, to, uh, but um, but I, 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 you can't just move a new motion. And if you resume consideration Thanks. of a previous motion, the person who previously has the floor had the floor has the floor, which would be me. So... Uh, um, I was going to say the motion is out of order because it has to be substantively different from the one that we had adjourned. You're not reintroducing it. You have tabled a whole new motion, and it's out of order because it's not substantively different. Well, I'll challenge you on that as well. <laughs> <laughs> You're entering very... Um, sending difficult precedents, but go ahead. Sir? Mr. Polanski, the question is whether or not to maintain the uh, chair's ruling. No. 
Mr. Baines? No. Mr. Jawari? No. Mr. Kuzmirchuk? No. Mr. Souza? No. Exactly what you want that follows the rules. Yes. And you guys just didn't figure out what that was. Yay to sustain the chair. Ms. Cousy? Yes. Madame Vignola? No. Mr. Green? No. So, yes, pour three, trois, and there's count, seven, set. Okay. Go ahead. I'll try another time. Thanks, Kelly. Well, you could follow just the proper procedure and yeah. <laughs> have a dilatory motion to resume, and we could Socialists avoid all Socialists don't believe this, in rules. If you want to pursue this path, go ahead. That taking into consideration the House of Commons administration will block times during the summer for technical blackouts when committees will be unable to meet, and that summer is a time when members spend time in their constituencies. I do have a point of order. Meeting though. with could their the, constituents. The new or the old attending motion committee be events in uh, both official languages. And the members of this committee Actually, and both. subcommittees agree not to meet during the summer recess, except for order. meetings. Understanding Order 106. Yeah. So my point of order is: uh, Could we? Could the new or the old, or would I, could I, whatever, whatever we're debating in this bizarro ruleless uh, framework, could it be distributed so we can at least look at it? Do you have it in English and French to distribute? Would you send it to the clerk to distribute? And I'm, I'm on the list, I assume. Yeah. I have uh, Mr. Genwes, then Mrs. Bignola. Uh, Did you wish to start, or do you wish to wait a few minutes to the... Well, I, uh, I, 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 I'd like it distributed, but I'm ready to, okay. to start. Go ahead, Mr. Genwes. Yes. Uh, so. So if I put the motion, I still have the floor. I haven't given the floor up. My... my yeah, just on that point, Chair, it, it, because it's the same motion, I believe... It's not uh, the same motion. Uh, I believe I should have the floor because I had the floor and we were debating this motion last. If you're you resuming a point of order, motion, it as a same, you can't gain the floor by a point of order. You're, you're right, I can't gain the floor by a point yeah, of order. Mr. But when you remove uh, consideration Dennis, on a previous Green, previous matter, then the member who had the floor that, has the floor. Uh, it is a, we'll consider a whole new motion because uh, they overruled. But it appeared you had given up the floor when I had asked a question, but no, you wish to I speak. Did not. Well, yeah, I just, I just wanted to put into light you know, what's transpired here, which is, uh, you know, the spirit of committees is that the committees direct their own course of action. And despite what I would consider to be the authoritarian instincts of the conservative uh, leader, what we have is a situation where committees are going beyond what, what are the usual practices of having planning meetings, subcommittees, where all parties, all opposition parties, can determine the course and direction of a committee. To have conservative chaired committees decide unilaterally when and how and what we meet on is an authoritarian instinct that I think goes against the spirit of the standing orders. And what you witnessed in overturning your decision, sir, is a reminder that the committees are at the democratic will of the members of the committee. And so when people go on and on, and I've seen the, the conservative uh, bot farms and, and rage farms online go on and on and on about shutting stuff down, couldn't be further from the truth. Now, New Democrats will stand up to conservatives and all the other cockamamie uh, things that are happening here. Um, we're going to take a position that we work. We work in our constituency as well. When we come to Ottawa, this is part of the job. We come here as legislators. We do that. We've done that for a very long time. Our work, at least for me, is in Hamilton Center. So when you have people go on a filibuster talking about how they're going on vacation in the summer and in the winter and in March break and they're always on vacation, that's crazy. Because for me, when I go back to my constituency, it's harder work. Now, maybe it's the case that the leader of the Conservative Party doesn't care to hear from Canadians in constituencies. But I'll tell you this, that as a new Democrat, my job is to represent my riding to the Capitol, not the capital to my riding, not the leader's office to my riding. So I'm very keen to get back and hear how Hamiltonians are facing the struggles that are before them. I'm keen to get very candid key, uh, feedback about the direction they want to see from this country in the next little while. And, you know, like if, if there had been courtesy provided in other situations that would have included other parties in the decision making and the direction, we wouldn't be here today. And we're in a minority government, despite whatever fantasy world Pierre Polyev or Andrew Scheer, whoever wants to live in. I'll tell you this, Mr. Chair, that still at 40 percent, 60 percent of the country doesn't 
doesn't approve of the direction that the Conservative Party wants to take the country in. This is a minority government. Every committee is in a minority situation. I don't mean to interrupt everyone, but we do want you to like, subscribe, share, get notified, comment. Please leave a comment. I love them. I checked them all. You can see. That's it. Back to the video. This one is pretty hot. It requires support from the other two opposition parties when you want to go in a direction. It's not the call of the chair. That's why we put these frameworks in place. The 106, to me, is the democratic way to recall a committee. It is the way in which you can find a willing partner in any of the other parties to decide the direction. But I'll tell you what, if the Conservative caucus can't find another party to cooperate on the direction of a committee, then it doesn't have a mandate to go in that direction. Pure and simple. Just as what is experienced here, whether it's regular or not, I'm under no illusions that, that any of the common courtesies are going to be adhered to in any potential future fantasy land uh, of a conservative iteration of government. I'm not naive. I know what to expect. But I'm not, it does not, doesn't mean I'm just going to accept it. So from that position, I just want to say, look, we're ready to work as we do in the House of Commons here in Ottawa with our job back in our communities over the summer, and should a situation occur that merits investigation, I, I think it would be preposterous for anybody in the Conservative caucus to think that there's some kind of bloc Quebecois NDP cabal. We've been accused of a lot of things. I don't know that we've ever been accused of that. So if you can't find a willing partner in either of the other opposition parties, then you're on your own. Pure and simple. I, I, you know, the stuff that, that I see online and I hear about it in my own committee in, in ethics, the vitriol and abuse and the, the you know, I, fortunately for me, I mean, I'm from Hamilton, so we're, we got thick skin. But I'll tell you, if for the people that are watching, if you have any other illusions that, you know, committees somehow are, are, ought to operate as though the conservatives have a majority, that's not the case right now. I can't tell the future, but I can tell you right now, that's not the case. So I'm here to put the Conservative Caucus on notice that if they want to, if, if, if consider it a notice of motion or a dilatory motion, Mr. Chair, have the chuckle. Um, but I promise you this, if you guys want to use your powers arbitrarily to call meetings without uh, consulting with any of the other parties, it's going to get adjourned. It's going to get adjourned because we can count. We can count the votes in the room. And this is still a, ma a minority situation. So that's why I came in here fired up today. Kelly, I got a lot of respect for you, my friend. And I know that you just take, I just, I, I know that you take, um, I know that you take your orders from the leadership like the rest of your caucus. I get it. Point of, but point at of the order, end of the day, Point of order. Yeah. Mr. Jonas? Yeah. The, the, the member is now uh, disparaging uh, the chair and his. Not role, at all. I just said I have respect actually, for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, let the hands are show. I have respect yeah, for him. Yeah, yeah. Let, let the hands are show that you, you said, you said, I have respect for you and you don't fulfill the functions of chair the chair properly you take orders from somewhere else that is well, that is that is not, not respect. a point of order that is uh, no no, no it, is, it is a point of order the, stand, the standing really orders have, have established oh, rules yeah. around around uh, decorum uh, right, and right, and, uh, and 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 that's a violation of that decorum Kelly, i apologize that's fine can you continue, continue? yeah i know that, uh, that after me it's going to be your guys yeah. so i'm going to get everything oh, sorry au madame point of order If we were seven or eight uh, francophones around the table all talking together uh, simultaneously and uh, two anglophones uh, because nobody could understand what was going on, this would never fly. And this is what I've been putting up with for the last 15 minutes. So please, I have the, have, have, have the uh, courtesy of putting up your hand if you're going to intervene and uh, quit cutting in. It'll be a lot easier for you, and it'll be a lot easier for us and for anybody who may be listening or who are witnesses or audience here in the room. Thank you. My apologies. Uh, Mr. Chair, I do have a, a question while I have the floor about our resources. How long do we have resources for? 6.30. Till 6.30? Okay. Um, I'm going to say at this, at this moment I'm going to move to suspend this meeting. Thank you.
Why? It's, it's not a motion. Mr. Janos, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Chair, I, I did want to start by making a comment with respect to the rules of committees and how committees abide by the rules. And uh, uh, Mr. Green and I actually first met at a, uh, at a debate hosted by the Catholic Archdiocese of Toronto. Uh, so uh, I think he'll, he'll, uh, he'll appreciate, uh, if he did sufficient prep for that debate, uh, reading uh, this section from the great play A Man for All Seasons about St. Thomas More, uh, in which William Roper, uh, Thomas More's uh, rather eccentric son-in-law, uh, says uh, to the future saint, so now you give the devil the benefit of the of law to which thomas more replies yes uh what would you do cut a great road through the law to get after the devil to which roper replies yes i'd cut down every law in england to do that to which more famously replies oh and when the last law was down and the devil turned around on you where would you hide roper the laws all being flat this country is planted thick with laws from coast to coast, man's laws, not God's. And if you cut them down and you're just the man to do it, do you really think you could stand upright in the winds that would blow? Yes, I give the devil benefit of law for my own safety's sake. Uh, an important reflection, I hope, for members as they consider whether or not it is wise and judicious to show shameless disregard for the long-established rules of parliamentary committees simply in order to achieve the objectives that they want. Uh, members who think that uh, overruling those rules through constant challenges to the chair uh, is going to be in their long-term interests are fooling themselves. They should understand that adherence to the rules, uh, be they uh, certainly man rules and not God's, uh, to, to quote the play, uh, nonetheless, uh, is what preserves us in our roles as members of parliament and our ability to fulfill our functions. Uh, Mr. Chair, where are we right now? We have Minister Anand, who uh, I don't always agree with, but I certainly appreciate being able to ask questions to, a, a very, uh, very busy minister, as all ministers are, who has come before this committee to answer questions for merely one hour, uh, and uh, I would have hoped we would have had the opportunity uh, to ask questions about the work she is doing as Minister of the Treasury Board. Uh, and instead of allowing those questions to proceed, we have a member of the NDP who, who is on a crusade to get parliamentary committees to work as little as possible. Uh, if, if anyone wants to know what, what are the animating causes uh, that, uh, that Mr. Green is excited about. Sorry, Mr. Uh, Janmas, let me interrupt sorry, for a second, I'll, I'll sit back. Mr. I, Kuzmerchuk. If I can just ask him to lower his voice and volume and, and step away from the uh, microphone. We just don't we want to look after our uh, I, interpreters I, and translators. Yeah, Thank I you. appreciate it, Mr. Kuzmerchuk, but I said before, if there is an issue, whether it's too close, too loud, microphone too or earpiece too close the translators will let the clerk know and then we will interrupt we just don't want to repeat mr chair of what happened yeah. in the house so we're very that sensitive was a completely that. different situation but i appreciate that mr kuzmerchuk go ahead mr genuous uh, thank you chair and if there were any problems with the sound i'm happy to start from the top uh is there any is the okay uh, I have I have assurance from my francophone colleague here that it's not necessary for me to start from the top. So I'll so I'll continue. If if the people of Hamilton would like to know, uh, what are the animating causes uh, for Mr. Green? What are the things that he gets up in the morning thinking about when he when he decides which issues to prioritize? I know some members come to Parliament and they think they want to focus on uh, economic issues. Some members come to Parliament and they want to focus on social programs. Some members come to Parliament wanting to focus on, uh, on foreign policy issues. Mr. Green comes to Parliament and he thinks, how can I create a situation in which members of Parliament have to work less? He is going from committee to committee. This isn't even his regular committee. He's not a regular member of OGO. He is going from committee to committee, moving motions designed to reduce the workload of members of Parliament. This is his mission. This is what has, this is what has brought him here. Mr. Speaker, he has, he has come to Parliament in order to reduce the workload of members of Parliament. He is, he is putting forward motions at committee saying that whatever happens, whatever the circumstances, I'm chairs gonna, cannot sorry, I'm convene interrupt meetings. For a sec. I'm hearing lots of chatter back and forth. Can we please, Mr. Genoa says the floor, let's just leave it out with him, please. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. His motions are proposing that whatever happens this summer, whatever the circumstances, that committees cannot 
be brought back to do to do their jobs over the summer. I, I can tell you, I think that uh, Canadians would expect something very different. Canadians would like to see members of Parliament working hard through the summer. Yes, going to constituency events, but Rappel also being prepared. S'il vous plaît, Monsieur le Président. Sorry, Mrs. McNaught. Well, thank you for giving me the floor for a moment. I find this very offensive to hear a member of parliament indicate that another member of parliament doesn't want to work. Uh, it's very insulting for this uh, colleague, whereas uh, he is saying expressly that uh, you know, those, uh, con those weeks uh, for constitutional work is still work. Now, uh, my, 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 uh, conscription, my, my writings people, they know I'm working. This doesn't matter. I will, I will not accept that anybody will say I don't work in the summer. The, the point? Mr. Genos, thank you, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Look, with with uh, with great respect, uh, I would just say there's there's more virtue in in telling the truth than in being offended. Uh, this this member, uh, Mr. Green, has uh, it is a matter of public record, gone from committee to committee, proposing the same motion. It is a motion to say that parliamentary committees cannot convene uh, over the summer. Uh, and uh, and and we do not support this. We believe that the work Mr. of Parliament Sorry, should I'm continue. Interrupt. Mr. Green, please, if when you have no, Mr. When you have the floor, you can speak. But please, okay, Mr. Green. You know, I'm tired of the talking over. There's too much disorder here. I'm adjourning. That's a pretty crazy committee investigation video, guys. Like. How lazy can this Liberal NDP coalition government obviously be? Like, who wants the summer off? Go and be a teacher if that's what you want. Like, I don't think members of parliament are expected to have three months vacation where they don't have to, yeah. It's tough to watch. This NDP Liberal coalition, we, we just need an election because again, I'm not a conservative, but I do realize we need change. It would seem right now that Poliev is our direction to steer. We'll see. Anyways, thank you for watching the video. It's always heated in these committee meetings. Like these investigations, I watch all of them. So click on my videos if you see one, because it's going to be interesting. You'll learn something. I do show some old pieces, but that's only because we are learning here as well. That's pretty much it. And it is summertime. They're not meeting. I'm Aaron. This is Question Period Canada. Like, subscribe, share, comment, all those fun things. Get notified for the live videos. We've got more of those. So many more coming up. That's going to be the base of the show is live programming. Anyhow, Aaron, Question Period Canada, like and subscribe. We'll uh, definitely check anybody's comment. I love that stuff. Catch the next video. Matt Green is a lazy person. This NDP liberal coalition needs to go. We won an election. Kelsey, Kelly, pardon me, McCauley is a stud. And Matt Green is a big letdown. Thank goodness we have smart guys like Gardaginu in there fighting for Canadians. Catch the next video.